So today we're going to talk about the first law of thermodynamics, the second law of thermodynamics, and the heat engine. So the first law of thermodynamics is an extension from the law of conservation of energy, which states that energy cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, it must be transformed from one form to another. Now when we talk about the first law of thermodynamics, we basically talk about closed systems. Now aside from closed systems, there are open systems as well as isolated systems. Within a closed system, matter or mass is not allowed to exchange. The mass remains constant within the system. What is allowed to exchange, however, is energy. So energy flows into the system or it can flow out of the system. In an isolated system, mass and energy is not allowed to flow anywhere. So everything remains constant. In an open system, both matter and energy is allowed to exchange. Okay? Now when we uh, talk about the transfer of energy, remember that there are only two types of transfer of energy, work and heat. Now heat can be subdivided into three uh, categories, convection, conduction, and radiation. When we talk about chemical work, we talk about this type of work, pressure times change in volume. And pre when pressure remains constant, we use this equation. When pressure isn't constant, we use calculus and integrate from V initial to V final. Now this law can be summarized in this equation. Okay, this law basically translates into this equation. And what this equation states is pretty simple. All it states is that the energy transfer or energy flow into a system is equal to the heat flow into the system plus the work done on the system. What it basically says is that a transfer of energy amounts to two types of transfers. Transfers due to heat or transfers to the work. Okay, No other transfer of energy exists. So let's see what heat engines are. Heat engines are basically systems or mechanisms that convert one form of energy into a second form of energy, namely heat into work. And this occurs under constant temperature. So let's see what the layout of a heat engine is. A heat engine is composed of a long cylindrical tube that contains molecules inside this area and that contains a movable piston controlled by an outside force, maybe your hand that's moving it up or down. It also contains a hot body connected to the bottom. And this hot body is important in conduction. Because remember, conduction requires for physical contact between two systems. And conduction uh, allows heat transfer or energy transfer from a hot object to a cold object. So let's see what the result is of constant pressure. From this formula, we see that kinetic energy is related to Kb, which is a constant, and the number of particles and T temperature. Now the number of particles remains constant because this is a closed system. Remember, remember, a closed system is a system in which the mass or matter or the number of particles remains constant. So N remains constant, these guys remain constant, and temperature remains constant. So that means kinetic energy also must remain constant. Okay, so what's the result? Remember, normally when there's a transfer of energy, the, the, uh, the energy is transferred into increasing the kinetic energy. But in this situation, there is no increase in kinetic energy. So the question remains, where does this energy transfer go into if it doesn't go into the kinetic energy? Okay? The answer lies in this equation. We see that by the ideal gas law, PV or pressure times volume equals number of moles times the constant times the temperature in Kelvin, okay? So, this guy remains constant because the temperature remains constant, and these guys are constants. This is constant because this is a, uh, a closed system. So, this must mean that the energy transfer must go into increasing the volume or expanding it. And the expansion creates a larger V or a larger volume, and because this guy is constant, this must be constant, so an increase in V must mean a decrease in P. A decrease in P will decrease, obviously, this P. And look, P, or pressure, is equal to force times area. Area 
remains constant because if you take the cross-sectional area of this uh, cylinder it doesn't change as the piston moves up or down so if this guy is constant and this guy is decreasing the pressure is decreasing then the force must also decrease so we see that in a heat engine when a when the piston is moving the force is changing and so is pressure and so is volume but temperature remains the same okay so what this basically means or what this basically implies is that heat must be converted to work and all the heat must be converted to work but that's actually not true and only about 10 to 20 percent normally is converted to work okay and let's see why well let's let's go back here when the energy is transferred into this system this system the volume uh, increases because the piston starts moving this way and it continues moving this way until when until it hits this limit here okay because the cylinder eventually ends when it reaches this place you have this picture here okay and now what happens now we need to somehow move this piston back to its original location so the, so the process could repeat so this is a cyclic process right we want to we want to move the we, uh, we want energy to go into here to move the piston this way then we want to move the piston back this way and this to continues okay indefinitely but let's see what happens here when we have a force and we start pushing with the force this way what happens to the kinetic energy or the temperature of the particles within this system well when you move this way pressure increases volume decreases and the particles get closer together they start banging against each other more violently more frequently this in turn increases temperature which in turn increases kinetic energy but we saw that we want to have constant temperature okay so what does this mean well this increase in temperature means that there's an increase in pressure and there's an increase in the force so now the force that we require or the net force that we require to move from this point to this point is greater than the force required to move from this point to this point so the work that's required to move the piston from this position to this position is less than the, than the work required to move from this position and this position and that's not something we want we want to be efficient and that's not very efficient so how do we fix the system well we fix the system by adding another uh, object to the coal, uh, to the heat engine something called a cold body we saw that we had a, a hot body for the specific purpose of conduction well now we have a cold body that also is specific for conduction in other words when there's a when th well, when this piston moves this way there's an increase in temperature and the increase in temperature causes energy to transfer via conduction from this place to this place and this uh, makes the temperature stay constant okay so the final outcome is that a heat engine needs to look like this a heat engine needs to have a, a, a hot body a cold body a cylindrical tube as well as a piston that's controlled by some outside force and this directly jumps into the second law of thermodynamics